Yo, as a manga reader, I just gotta tell you guys like it is. This episode made me choke up. Like, it was, it was really sad. It was legit sad. This scene with All Might and Izuku, when Izuku finally found out the truth, the origin story of One for All... This is a scene I've been waiting to see animated for a very, very long time. Because, as I said when Season 2 started, the tone of Boku no Hero Academia is going to take a radical shift. Especially when we hit the Stain arc, in which we did. And many have noticed that the tone of the series has definitely grown a lot darker. And it stays that way. The scene I've been waiting to see animated finally happened. And my god, Studio Bones, they delivered. The scene with All Might explaining the origin of the Quirk and the main in-game villain and what this villain was capable of, what happened in the past, just everything, the way it was delivered was just grade A quality. It was legit phenomenal. I just, I'm absolutely speechless and... I feel, I have so many feels, I'm sad after watching the episode because just that scene with All Might, it has so much meaning there, and I'm just gonna say right now, even me as a manga reader, that I expected this to happen, I knew this was gonna happen, I, I knew because I read the manga, even though I knew, just seeing this scene animated, it really adds so much emotion to these characters, just so many feels, and... I know, in some ways, I'm a little bit jealous. I am legit jealous of anime onlys right now. I am. And the reason for that is because of how good Boku no Hero Academia is. As in terms of an anime adaptation, Studio Bones has already proved time and time again, over and over and over and over again, non-stop, since Season 1 came out, that they truly care, and they put so much time and passion into this series. You could just see it, the love for this series. Not many studios, not many workers probably want to go this far because of the stress and we know about how the conditions are for some employees in Japan and how they have to work and basically do slave labor it just shows that they truly do care about Boku no Hero Academia for them to actually just put all of this effort into it you can see they're not cutting corners when it comes to the music score when it comes to the voice acting to even the art animation and so many individual scenes even some of the still frames they just look beautiful all around just a great series and once again just this scene it's a very big important part of this series. It's a very critical moment for this series and holds a lot of weight for the end game and later on down the road for future content. This episode is probably by far one of the most important episodes of the series. And the reason for that is because of the information we got. All Might will not be around when Izuku faces the greatest evil, which is All for One. It's a sad moment. It's something that has been implied for a very long time. Even as an anime only, I feel like many already have become very aware that All Might is eventually going to die. It's common sense. I mean, not just because it's a shonen, but because of just the condition All Might is in. Now, I'm not spoiling, so don't worry. I'm just saying that... It's obvious that All Might will eventually die. He's had so many death flags since the beginning of the series. So much build up and so many things that happen to where he is losing power. Over time you can see he's losing power. He's not as strong as he once was. He's no longer Prime All Might. And a time is going to come most likely to when he falls. The symbol of peace will fall from grace. And... This scene emphasizes that, that there will come a time to when he will be gone. It's over, and he's very aware of this. He is aware that he will die, and he will not be there to help out Izuku when he has to face the greatest evil, which is all for one. It's sad. It's truly sad, and he didn't have the courage to tell Izuku the truth, and it's a very sad thought when you think about it, especially when you look at the face of All Might and the message there. All Might as a character, 
He's always been a character that has smiled. He's always smiling. If you go back to many scenes throughout the series, he's always smiling. Unless it's a comedy scene, you just see where he's frowning a little bit and you see blood coming out of his mouth or whatever. But it's mainly for comedy. But in a serious moment or serious matters, we never really see All Might show the expression or the emotion he showed in this episode. It's a rare. It's a rare event. And... When you see the man frowning, and you just see him cover his face, you just see how he's very sad, and he looks at Izuku, and he's like, tell him, tell him, All Might, tell him. He's trying to work up the courage to say something to Izuku, and you see him frowning, it just shows that this man, what he knows, and what he fears, and all of the things that are coming, you can see he's truly sad and terrified about that, and it's just... It's awful when you think about this character that has always been smiling. He's always showed a happy face every time he meets everybody. He's always smiling. That's like a signature thing when it comes to All Might. But he was not smiling in this episode. You see the man was dead serious. And you can see that the man wanted to tell the truth. He wanted to tell more. But he just couldn't. He couldn't say everything because of just how many emotions he has. From what happened in the past with his previous fight with All for One. So, talking about the flashback, it's clear as day that All Might has a lot, a lot of issues with All for One. You can clearly see that something dramatic had to happen, especially when you see the black and white still frame in this episode, with it zooming out, and you see this body on the floor, and you see All Might, like a younger All Might, you don't see his face, but you see him on the ground and all that, and he's looking down at this body, and you can only assume that that body is all for one. And remember, he was talking that he apparently defeated all for one. And we see this body, which I want to point out the message of that scene. All Might, he is the pinnacle of heroes. He's the number one hero. He is the symbol of peace. He has changed society. He is someone that has reduced the crime rate thanks to his actions. And it's obvious thanks to him taking down All for One at that time, was why crime rate dropped so low. It's thanks to that. However, we need to look deeper into that scene. When All Might is standing above this body, and you see blood, clearly you know blood is just pouring out of this body, that image was not of a hero. It's obvious that was not an image of that. A hero doesn't go that far. When you think of a hero, they don't beat someone to the point to where they're basically dead. Because All Might was under the impression that All for One was permanently gone. For instance, dead. And when you see the face at the end of the episode of All for One, it's completely fucked up. The man is just ruined. His entire face is obliterated. And it just shows how much strength and how much force All Might used against him to bring him down. Which makes sense when this man is able to steal quirks and, you know, give them to others and use them and stuff. It makes sense that this man would be very, very powerful. However, once again, let's point out the fact that All Might is the number one hero. This man that has responsibilities. He went that far and beat a man's face in. Even if he was the greatest evil, the symbol of evil, he went that far. And in some ways, you could assume, on your viewpoint, that All Might was overcome with evil in that moment. He lost himself and didn't think of actually saving others, but he probably wanted to bring down the symbol of evil for his own desires. And so it's exactly what Stain was trying to stop and it's kind of funny when you look at the prospect of what Stain was fighting for, what his ideology was, and he liked All Might because All Might was selfless. But it's obvious that for All Might to go that far and beat All for One to that state, it definitely was not something that a hero would do. Clearly. So, it's a very dark moment. It just shows that whatever happened... It really affected All Might. It was a big moment in his life, and it has stayed with him to his present time right now in the series. So, besides that, let's talk about the origin of the symbol of evil. So, all for one, when quirks first started to appear in society, all for one had the quirk ability to where he could still other quirks and then give quirks to others so because of this he was able to make 
a criminal organization. He was able to make people fall in line, surrender to him, or join him because he could give people that didn't have quirks, quirks. And let's point out the time frame. Remember, the time when the symbol of evil, All for One, appeared was when not everybody had a quirk. There was, like, majority of the population was like Izuku. They were quirkless. And so, in this case, with this man having the ability to give others quirks, it opened the door for many to join his side because people that are quirkless and couldn't do anything, if someone offered you, you know, a quirk, you're probably going to want to ha join them and get a quirk because it would make you feel special. So he was rallying a massive army of quirk users. He was just giving a bunch of quirks to many people, and sometimes when he gave quirks, it didn't work. They just went complete brain dead and they lost any functions with their bodies, which is what we have seen happen with the Nomus. So it's also showcase that the Nomus that have been created is thanks to All for One. And his ability, if he gives quirks to someone, there is a likely possibility that they will become completely brain dead and just die. They're, they're figuratively dead in a way. So, it, it just shows the power of this man and how he built his empire when quirks first started to appear. And it shows that society was very, very different from where it is right now. When you look at Boku no Hero Academia's universe, it's a society filled with nothing but people with special powers. And in this case, special powers are now the norm, while quirkless people are the special. That That's kind of how you can view society now. So Izuku, he's in a state where he is the special one, while people like All Might and stuff, they are the norm. And at that time in society, people obviously they were prejudiced against people that were different that's just how you know humans are we do not like things that are different than we are we don't like that we don't like change we don't like it to when something seems to be stronger than we are we try to fight against it or destroy it completely and in this case thanks to people unlocking quirks they were very different, and obviously they were the special type of people at the time, and many that didn't have quirks, they were either jealous, or they wanted to use these people, or they were just afraid of them, fear drove them, and also that is what All For One gained. He used that, he used those emotions to fuel what he had, fuel the, his reign of evil, and it shows that not everything was peaceful. If society was different, if quirks never popped up, they might be space traveling right now. That's what Izuku said. He's like, he heard that somewhere to where there could be potentially space travel already if quirks didn't pop up. It slowed the growth of humanity and space travel thanks to what's happening right now. So it just really makes you think, like, what would have happened if quirks didn't pop up? But also, what caused quirks to really pop up? That is the question we all need to wonder. But even then, though, getting into the origins of One for All, apparently... All for One, which is the symbol of evil, gave birth to the symbol of peace. It's very poetic in a way when you think about it. The great evil spawned the greatest good. And without evil, there can't be good. Without good, there can't be evil. Without light, there can't be a shadow. Without shadow, there can't be light. That's, that's a common metaphor many of us say, or many people say. I've seen it many times. And that's kind of the point here, what Horikoshi was trying to write. Showcasing that if it wasn't for something so evil... Something like All Might would have never have been born, but the same could be said if something like All Might was never around. Something as evil as All for One probably could never be born as well. You cannot have good only or evil only. It's like yin and yang. And it's interesting with the way this is showcased because All for One made his greatest nemesis, which is one for all. And the names of these quirks have so much meaning. All for one, everything for one person, one for all, one man for everyone. The message of these quirk names, it's like yin and yang. They just cannot be separated. They have to always, you know, be there. And what we see here is that all for one gave his brother, which was quirkless, an ability, which was to stockpile power. Now, at the time, and what was explained... Nobody really knows why he did that. Nobody really knows why All for One gave that ability to his weak, younger brother. It's not really explained. We don't know the reasonings behind it. We don't know why. But regardless of what happened, though, when All for One gave that stock power ability to his little brother, his little brother had a useless quirk, which nobody knew about. 
he was even unaware of it. He found out that his quirk was the ability to pass on a quirk. And we found out that quirks can mutate. If someone has another quirk given to them, a quirk can mutate together, and then that can be passed on. And that's what happened. One for all came about thanks to a mutation in a quirk ability. And that is what spawned All Might and countless others before him. And now Izuku is thanks to the mutation of a quirk. Now, I know many are going to be talking about the fact that Izuku might have his own quirk. That is a potential possibility. I mean, we know Izuku is quirkless, and we got to look at the story of the information we got. Apparently, All for One thought his brother was quirkless. Even the brother thought he was quirkless. But, come to find out, he really wasn't. And so, in this case, Izuku could have another quirk that's completely useless. But... It might eventually pop up when he needs it, and it might mutate with one for all. So this is very interesting when you think about it. It's very interesting that basically there is things like mutations of quirks, and that's what happened, and that's what spawned the quirk that our MC has. So it's cool how the legacy of the little brother of All for One has carried down through many generations to stand up and fight this great evil. That's what this is. So, it's been built up for years just to reach this point. So, that's crazy. It's legit crazy. Now, with that being said, let's talk about the happier moments of this episode. I think I've uh, talked about all the depressing stuff. Let's get into the lighthearted stuff. So, we get to see the aftermath of the Stain arc, and everybody's internships are finally over, and they're finally back at, you know, school. We get to see how many have changed, how many have improved, classes are finally starting to begin once again, and we just get to see how our characters have grown. Ida shows his character development, Todoroki is showing his character development, Izuku is showing his character development, and, you know, all the other characters, like Ochiko and all of them, Jiro showing her development. We just get to see how they have changed. They are definitely different from when they were before, before Season 2 began. And I do like the display of that. And once again, I don't want to focus on it too much, but this is one of the best qualities of Boku no Hero Academia, is how side characters get developed. And it's just a great part of the series that really just makes the series shine, in my personal opinion. And with Izuku back in school, we get to see him displaying his power and how he has a better grasp on it and controlling it. He still has a long way to go, but he is definitely moving on up and able to somewhat perform a lot better without breaking his bones like paper mache, which is a great start because, I mean, every time we've seen this man fighter use, you know, one for all, he's broke his bones like it's nothing. So it's good to see him finally being able to master his quirk somewhat. It's nice. It's nice progression with him as a character, but also with his quirk too. He's gained a lot of strength. So, we also have a funny moment with the bath scene or changing room scene, which is legit hilarious because you have it to where a minute up and he's like, hey, here's a peephole and all that. We can see the girls. And he starts talking about all the girls and, you know, their bodies and stuff. And then eventually, as he's looking through the hole, Jiro sticks her little, uh, you know, headphone jacks straight through the hole and stabs Minata in the eye. And he's like, ah, my eye and all that. And Jiro, she's talking and all that. And she's like, out of all the girls, he didn't mention me, which is fucking hilarious, but I feel so bad because, in all honesty, I like Jiro. I, I really, really like Jiro as a character, and this is going to be slight spoilers. I'm not going to lie about that. It's nothing major, so don't worry. It's not going to spoil the series for you, but Jiro is a character out of all of our cast. She's actually one of the characters that's gotten the least amount of development. She has, and I really would love to have an arc focused on her. And I love her as a character, but I feel like I would love her even more if we had some more time for her character. And that's why I said I would love a filler episode on her. I would really love that. I would really love to see an episode dedicated to her and just seeing what she does. But we sadly didn't get that, and also we haven't had really a lot of time with her in the manga. And so I'm kind of sad about that, and she's really one of my favorites. But like I said, I just haven't seen enough of her for me to really say she is my all-time favorite. But it's very disappointing. But still, the aspect of her saying, like, oh, you didn't talk about me and all that. You can see how she's a little bit upset. Uh, that's pretty funny because she actually was very self-conscious that Minata, it didn't seem like he was really interested in her. That, that's funny. That, that's legit funny. So, uh, besides that aspect, I mean, we did have that Bakugo stuff. So, I mean, that was funny, too, with his hair. But I think that's about it. I think I've covered everything. If I didn't... Please forgive me, but I want to end it here. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. She be out.